Welcome and thank you for joining us in sharing this compilation of views and opinions that have been shared by the youth in response to Reverend Zoli's sermon on Sunday with the title of Be Ready for the Return of Jesus. My name is Debbie Donaldson and it just is my absolute joy <laughs> to have um, been part of preparing this compilation and to be part of sharing it back to you. And I'm just trusting that the Lord is going to work in a powerful way as you listen uh, to some of um, the views that have been expressed by our youth. I particularly want to thank Tabung, Amy, Kristen, Ben, Gertz and Aidan. Thank you for your generous hearts, for your generous spirit and for your love of Christ that leads you to feel comfortable with sharing your faith and your thoughts with us. Uh, may you be blessed generously by God um, in all the day, with all, with all you do and in all the days of your life. Father God, Holy Spirit, Son of Man, we welcome you in our midst and pray that the responses we have received from our youth will be anointed by you. Help us to fix our minds on you and your word. Speak to us according to the message we need to hear. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Just a quick check-in with you. Before we begin uh, listening to the answers to the questions and hearing people's views, you might want to, I don't know whether you have watched Reverend Zolli's sermon on Sunday. If you haven't, you may want to pause the recording now and go and watch it. Alternatively, you may want to open up the document we sent on the BMC Youth Line, which is a, um, is a, a copy of Reverend Zolli's sermon with a couple of the different questions inserted into it so that you can uh, follow the, the, the views and opinions that have been shared. Let's take a moment as a sort of introduction into important moments in our lives and clearly being ready for the return of Jesus is an important moment. Uh, and let's reflect on how do you prepare for important events in your life. Just take a, a couple of moments to pause and think this through. And, uh, and listen to what was shared. Important events that occur during our lives can often be stressful. And I know that I, I have felt overwhelmed at points when something important is coming up. I think this is quite a normal feeling to have. However, to prepare for these important events, I've put a lot of time aside to find out all the details, such as what will occur during this event and what is required of me. I often write down the details and a list of everything I need to do or bring along. I ensure that I am well prepared for this important event well before it actually happens. I prepare for important events in my life by planning them strategically and when, like when they're going to happen, how they're going to happen and if I should or shouldn't actually be doing them. Depending on the event, I will practice as much as I need to and I will try to prepare everything that is needed for the event. I pray for the Lord's advice. As you can hear, and I'm sure you can probably relate to because I certainly could, is that when something significant and important is happening in our lives, we put a lot of focus into it. We are very clear about our planning and we're very clear about what we have to prepare for, what the attention to detail we need to pay pay to that particular event and the prayer that we need to put into that event to anticipate and to have it anointed and guided by God. And I just think the invitation to pray about it and to give that preparation into God's hands is such an important message and thank you. So let's just take a look then, what does it mean when you think about God, Jesus' second coming? And what emotion do you feel you're going to be experiencing with his second coming? Um, and if you could, how would you like to prepare for his coming? And how would you do this? One of the first emotions that I experience when I think about the second coming of Jesus is excitement. Because um, at a time that we're living in, honestly, the world is just spiraling downhill. And... Um, I really, truly do look forward to meeting Jesus and just for everything, like every negative bad thing that exists in this world to eventually disappear because like 
I just can't wait for evil to be completely destroyed. And I know that our redemption is finally going to be completed because um, our redemption is in the coming, the second coming of Christ. Though we might face very difficult times throughout our lives, uh, but the moment we meet Jesus already, our it's us, it's a form of us being redeemed as long as you born again and you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you believe in his death and resurrection. I am like I'm actually terrified of Jesus' second coming simply because I have sinned so many times in my life and I don't know whether he's gonna accept me even though I've sinned. I feel hopeful that the world could change for the better. Pray and keep faith in my father. I see it as an opportunity to speak to him and get to know my savior. I feel incredible joy as it will be an amazing and joyous day to see the return of Jesus. I'm truly filled with joy to think about the day when Jesus will return to earth and end all the pain, suffering and sin. It makes me so happy to know that he will come one day to fetch all the children of God and bring them back to heaven to live eternally. To prepare for the second coming of Jesus, I would make sure my relationship with God and faith in him is as strong and steadfast as it could be. I would ensure that I have repented for every sin I have made and will make and do everything I can to make sure that I do not commit these sins again. I would also spend as much time as I could praying to God and reading the Bible, as well as doing everything I can to spread the gospel and show God's love to others. If I had to prepare for his coming, it would be very difficult because you wouldn't know what to prepare for him because... It's a little strange because you don't know, you know the person, but you also don't know the person at the same time, what they like very much. Um, How I would imagine preparing for Jesus' coming is living a life that is worthy. Uh, but before all of that, I think the best way you can prepare for the coming of Jesus is receiving salvation through Christ. I think that's the biggest point of like preparation that you need for Jesus' second coming is if you do not have him in your heart, if you do not believe in him, if you do not have faith in him, automatically your salvation is not guaranteed. Um, so I think the best way to prepare for Jesus' coming, Jesus' second coming is First of all, to accept him as your Lord and Savior, to believe in him and to trust and to uh, believe in his resurrection and what he did for you on that cross. Um, and I believe I am prepared in that regard. Um, and also just living a life that is worthy of Christ, <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, just living a life that is pleasing to him, like what, are, what am I watching? What kind of things am I watching? Um, am I prepared mentally? Um, or, am I fill, or am I filling up my mind with all sorts of trash that are not going to benefit my salvation or not going to benefit my life eternally? Um, am I reading my Bible daily? What am I doing? Like, um, Do I understand the scriptures? Am I asking for guidance from the Holy Spirit? Don't, don't know about you, but I picked up on just those emotions, those two types, extreme emotions, that excitement and anticipation, and just knowing that I am saved and I bear the mark of God and that I am going to be able to be with Jesus. And then there's just this sense of fear and terror and a little bit of terror, you know, um, and concern. Do, do I actually know Jesus? This is the Son of God, right? <laughs> and He is beyond anything I can imagine. I don't necessarily know him as i know him he's more than i could possibly imagine so will i actually know him and a sense of have i done enough to really embrace our, my faith in jesus have i listened to his word have i transformed my life and there's a sense of is that enough in his eyes and knowing though that he loves us and that we will be received by him because we believe in him hmm thank you so let's just take a moment to look at what might get in the way of us really preparing for God, being with God, accepting Him now in this life. Doubt. 
giving in to temptation and prioritizing unimportant things. I think what could get in my way of preparing for Jesus' second coming is my own doubts and fears of not feeling worthy to receive the salvation brought by Jesus. Um, and I think one of the things that would get in the way of me doing this is basically the business of life, like uh, school studies, um, responsibilities at home, and um, just some of the distractions as well that the world is norm- constantly throwing at, at, in my face, I think would definitely get in the way of me preparing um So this is why I think it's very important to be very mindful of the things I do, to be very mindful of the way I speak to people, to be very mindful of how much time I'm giving to God and how how much time I'm giving to others and um, how much time I'm giving to other things. Like, for example, studies, yes, are important, but they shouldn't replace my time with God. And I will not allow them to to replace my time with God. And this is why I feel time management is very important. So I think if you manage your time right and you ask for the strength from God, everything should be hunky-dory. So having heard the whole of Reverend Zoli's sermon, what for you really hit home for you? And what was that point that made a difference for you and you you want to ponder on? And for me, it was that statement when uh, Zoli said, you know, imagine that Jesus would respond to you and say, here you are, my faithful servant. And it would just be incredible for me that to be seen in that light. And so for me, that's very aspirational to work and to to trust and to just give myself, surrender myself into the Lord's hands around that and just trust that he's going to hear my prayers to transform me to be his faithful servant. What, what hit home for you? I think the most important point is where Zole says, do not make excuses when Jesus comes. This is a harsh reality of Christianity, but is extremely important to keep in mind. We only have a certain amount of time to get to know God and who He is, as well as to prepare for the second coming of Jesus. However, we do not know when Jesus will come to earth again. Therefore, it is so important that we do not waste the time that we are given and only start to prepare when it is already too late. Jesus will not accept any of our excuses as God has given every single one of us the time that we need. I think all of the points are important as you have to be ready because Jesus can return at any moment. Um, Really preparing your mind, your heart and your spiritual life as well. Um, Just being prepared in that regard, I think you can't really go wrong. Of course, we are fallible creatures and there are obviously going to be moments in time where life really does beat us down. And in those moments, we might forget that we are running a race and the race in a race, you don't stop for breath. You can't stop for breath. You have to constantly keep running and running and running and that is i think the mindset that we need to keep in this preparation that you got to keep preparing do not make excuses when jesus comes it kind of stuck out for me simply because in every day no matter what situation we're in we all tend to make excuses either because we don't know what to say or because we just don't want to do it and for me that kind of happens in my life when it comes to my life with christ because i don't want to spend time with him because i think i'm not good enough or i just maybe he does not going to accept me because i'm not worthy enough and most importantly because i'm a sinner and i don't always spend time with him because i don't always find it comfortable if and and yeah stuff like that Father God, I commit our youth into your hands at this very moment. I pray that they will put on the armor of God, and I pray Ephesians 6 over them, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, and the the feeting and their foot may stand on the gospel of peace. And they may they be ready and know that nothing can come between you and them, and that you have got this taken care of. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
there is one thing you could say to Jesus at the second coming, what would it be? Uh, something I would say where if I first met Christ, I would probably welcome him, like welcome him, introduce myself, maybe. <laughs> Why would you die for us? Why suffer? I would say to him that I am incredibly grateful for all of his love and blessings. Wow. I haven't really thought too deeply about a specific thing that I would like to say to Jesus. But I think right now I'd say thank you for... I thank him for bringing me to a point whereby I I was receptive and accepting of what he did, believing in him, because I feel like God allows all things to happen, evil, good, bad, um, terrible. It's all under his control. It's all him. Um, I, I just feel like I'm, I'll tell him that I am so happy that he died for my sins and that I have an, a chance and opportunity to be able to spend eternal life with him. Because I feel like the moment I have a chance to spend eternal life with him, then I have all of eternity to ask him questions, to have conversations with him. So yeah, I just think the first thing I'd say is thank you. I would honestly just drop to my knees and thank Jesus with all of my heart for dying on the cross for me. I would beg him to forgive me for all the sins I have committed during my life. As we close, what's the one thing you want to remember from this sermon? Always be prepared for anything, especially when you don't know when it is going to happen. I want to take and remember from this message that I have to be ready at all times, and so I must be living for him consistently and continuously in order to be ready for when he returns. I learned that you must have faith in what the Lord can do for you and to be wise. The biggest lesson I took from the sermon is to keep my lamp burning, to keep it burning um, and not to quench it at all costs. And um, I think that's the biggest thing I took from this because um, lately I've been having sort of like a putting myself in a state of mind whereby I am in constant preparation. The main lesson that I have taken from Zolo's sermon is to live every day of my life with my focus on God and in a way that is worthy of Him and the gift of grace that He has given us. Do not waste the time that God has given us. Father God, I just give thanks that your word is so clear to us um, and I thank you for the message that was shared with us. And I pray that we may all one day be able to say, Lord, here I am. And he will respond, here you are, my faithful servant. Amen.